Hey, the fertile lands versus the neotropical rattlesnake. Two live feedings and fangs in your face coming up. Subscribe now. Fangs in your face. Hey y'all, what's happening? Man, we've been really busy. We're, we're in the process right now where a lot of snakes are breeding. So I've been working in here day and night, pairing things up and just doing my norm. And um, let me tell you, thank you guys so much for all of the support. I mean, Robert Rossi Jr., thank you so much, bro. All the little goodies you sent us, it's greatly appreciated. It's, I mean, the simple stuff in life. I mean, it, it really means a lot. I mean, like the little hide you sent us, the uh, the hexadine, that stuff, it's always greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, Robert. Hey, and Andrew Veslowski, hey, thank you, bro, so much. Hey, Andrew, I'm gonna do a video for you. We're gonna do King Diesel in the next video. We're gonna feed him. We're gonna clean him, feed him, get him out, stretch him out so we can give you an update on him. He's getting pretty big. He's, he's sleeping right now, but <laughs> he'll be out in the next day or two. But hey, Sean Black, thank you so much, Sean. Hey, Sean, we're gonna look into that t-shirt thing, brother. Um, if we gotta go with another another supplier that can get bigger shirts, we're gonna do it for you. We want you to have our shirts. Um, oh, the shirts. Hey, the Puff Adder shirts are out, guys. Grab them up while they're hot. <laughs> they actually came out, Teespring done an amazing job with these. I mean, they came out fantastic. But uh, Sean Black, thank you, bro. Uh, Dan McCarty, Paul Breslin, Wally Tucker, thank you so much, Wally, and Thomas Wyatt. And I wanna thank the whole Venom Squad for all your support. Our subscribers, and for some reason, just in the past couple weeks, we have gained several hundred subscribers. It's like, boom, it's just like shot up. It's crazy. I mean, our views are growing, our channel's growing. Imagine that. But uh, we couldn't be happier. But just in the past couple of weeks, we have just like, it just like, just been jumping in leaps and bounds in subscribers. So we're pretty happy about that. But I'm gonna tell you something, our, our crew, our Venom Squad, there's, there's nobody like you guys. I mean, especially with all these storms going on and all this bad stuff, all these weather things going on in the country. I know there's a lot of keepers been losing animals due to, you know, not having backup systems and stuff and the cold and, and they, they've been losing part of their collections, if not their whole collections. And um, I had somebody reach out to me on Instagram, one of my followers. I, I, I hate using that word followers. I mean, I, I just don't like using that word. Oh, he's a, he, he's a follower. You guys ain't followers. You guys are my friends. You guys are, don't be kicking the camera, Dina. <laughs> I mean, you guys are, you, you guys are Venom Squad. You guys ain't, ain't followers, you know. Uh, we're leaders, that's what we are. We're, we're leaders. But I'm gonna tell you, I've had people reach out to me just to see how our collection's doing and if we needed anything. And, and thank you guys so much. I mean, I had a gentleman reach out to me on my Instagram account and, and he, he literally said, if you need a damn generator, if you're going through this, I'll deliver one to you. I mean, he goes, he says, I got a brand new one sitting in my garage, I'll bring it to you. I'm like, I mean, that kind of stuff is the difference between the Venom Squad and everybody else, all right? But I mean, which we have a good backup system here. I mean, you know, I keep a big amount of animals and we've always protected our animals. And I'll tell you like, I mean, we have, we have generators. We have the best generators we can possibly get our hands on. If we lose power in the cold, We've got generators, backup heaters. If we lose power during a damn hurricane and the heat, I've got backup air conditioning units that, that, that get put in here and they run off the generator. And if that fails, we've got a second plant in place, even with little space heaters, propane space heaters. You know, I'm gonna show you one real quick. Just, just for you guys, you can see that, you know, it, it ain't gotta be expensive to have a little bit of backup protection for your animals. I'm gonna pull out one of my little one of my little space heaters that I use just as like a quick emergency heat source. You know, for you guys that have just you know, like a smaller collection or, you know, of course we've got backup generators and we, we don't have them like 20 years old. I mean, we keep current stuff. I mean, it's if you're gonna have animals, you gotta protect them. I mean, you owe it to the animals to protect them against everything. You know what I mean? Not only protect yourself with anti-venom, bite protocols, you owe it to the animals that you keep that you house to be able to protect them from weather and from 
bad conditions. But like these little peak buddies, let me tell you something. For, for the price on these things, these things are about a hundred bucks. Okay, now this is this is the big one. This is the, the it's made by Mr. Heater. This is the big buddy. And I've got these for a backup in case my generator shuts down. If it runs out of gas, if we run out of gas and we can't get gas, I mean, I keep 20 gallons stacked up at all times just for the generators. But if something happens to that source, we can always jump to these, okay? And these things are awesome. They put out heat like you wouldn't even imagine. A radiant heat that's beautiful, but they actually got little fans in them, okay? And the flan, the, the flan, the flans help move the heat around, but the fans will help spread the heat around and it's battery operated, okay? But, and they run off these little tiny propane tanks. All right, and either you unscrew them on and off. These things are very inexpensive. I mean, you get them in little sets of two, they're like six bucks. I keep 40 of these in a crate ready to go at all times. I mean, you never know. The weather's unpredictable. And no matter where you live, it can get cold or hot. You know I mean, South Florida, you're probably not gonna get snow very often, but so you need a backup air conditioner. You, you, you gotta protect your animals, but, but we keep this stuff tight around here at Venom Central. But um, but I'll tell you, just for the price, you guys can't beat it, it's a hundred bucks. Instead of buying that baby gaboon at the show, buy a heat buddy and just put it away and it's there if you need it. The only thing I suggest is, I mean, propane is one of the cleanest gases to burn. I mean, we eat over propane, we gas grills, you know what I mean? But is actually have a little bit of air source for your room, fresh air, where you can put fresh air in that room every once in a while while you're running these things. Just to keep your animals safe. But the big heat buddy, I mean, this thing will heat this whole room. I mean, just for them emergency situations. This is the stuff you gotta get. This is the stuff you guys gotta think about. You know what I mean? Simple products, great, great products that will help you keep your animals alive. So, but just a quick tidbit, guys. And if you're in them hot areas where you're worried about hurricanes and stuff, you gotta have a backup air conditioner because animals can get too hot and die. They can get too cold and die. So we keep all that stuff. But anyways, we're gonna get on with this video, you guys. Okay, guys, um, we're gonna jump right into this, but but basically, um, we're gonna have some fun today. I'm gonna feed some animals and we got some fangs in your face. We did all the bit of stuff. So there are some cool ones. The puff adders were, they were amazing. So were the gaboons. But I'm gonna feed I'm gonna do a new tropical rattlesnake, okay? And I'm gonna do a fertile lance. We're gonna do a big adult mugenai, Bothaus mugenai, and we're gonna feed one of the sub-adult uh, Crotalus the Yucatan rattlesnake. And, and I just wanna show you guys just, now this is a feeding response and just how quickly they dispatch prey and just how dangerous these animals are. And while you should have your own anti-venom, you should have bite protocols, you should have all this stuff in place if you're working with these critters, okay? Because, especially with the neotropical rattlesnakes, you know, everybody thinks, well, I got a neotropical rattlesnake and you know, it's, no, they're, they're dangerous. They are on a level different than everything else. I mean, cause like Crofab is not gonna work. I'm sorry, but it won't. And don't have that false sense of security because you've got a rattlesnake, you can go to the hospital and be treated. Not all the time, okay? Especially with the middle American rattlesnakes. They're, they're on a level on their own, but we're gonna jump right into it guys and get into these feedings and have some fun. So hang in there cause it's coming at you. Coming in hot. <laughs> Okay, and today we're gonna to start with this large female, Bothrops mugenii, and we're gonna offer a live prey at them. And we'll insert the timer once the envenomation happens. Oh, and she is hanging on like a bulldog. <clears throat> and that venom is taking effect really quickly. Females exhibit this behavior where they, they actually latch on and they, they hold on. Wow, I'm gonna tell you, I think it's over. That is fast. Wow, oh my goodness. She's just a ferocious animal. I'll tell you with this animal's venom components, 
I mean, it is designed for a very quick dispatch. I mean, the best way to describe this animal's venom is proteolytic, but you know, it's it's actually found traces of cytotoxic, but it's mild toxic. It's it's necrotoxic. It's very hemorrhagic. But what's interesting about BMV, which is Bothrox mugeni venom, is that you know it, it can can contain up to thirty percent of zinc metalloproteins in it, which is a a major component that some of the uh, some of the drug companies are able to apply um, in like different drugs for inflammation. So it's a medically significant animal right now, and that's why we're breeding these because all my babies go straight to venom labs for extraction and so they're they're getting bred for the right reasons i mean these ain't pets these animals are are bred to do good so <laughs> but that was very fast oh my goodness that was quick and i've been doing a pretty lengthy study on behavior on the mugeni and and, and feeding behavior and different scenarios strike and hold strike and release you know how quickly they dispatch prey but i'll tell you what, what's interesting is that females tend to be more venomous than the males they have a higher concentration of certain components which make them a little bit more venomous and they go through this ontogenic change as they grow from babies to adults and what's also interesting is that it varies from from, from gender, from male to female. So, like this little girl's babies are all going to a venom lab here very soon. They're all plump and ready to be <clears throat> raised at the lab and, and used for venom extraction. And we'll produce them again this year. We've got two or three more labs that want them now. Becoming a hot ticket. BMV is a very important venom right now. Wow, that was quick. I mean, I think that was probably five seconds. That was fast. That was very fast. So we're going to do the verses today. I want to see just how quickly the Mugeni can dispatch prey versus one of the neotropical rattlesnakes, the actual, the Crowless Zobcon, the Yucatan rattlesnake, which is known to be one of the most venomous rattlesnakes in the world. But she did that pretty quickly. <laughs> I mean, that is a very potent venom. And of course, we call these fur de lance, and you know, that's kind of the slang name for a lot of your lance headed vipers. And of course, fur de lance, it refers to this snake's head shape, the head of a lance. But this this little rascal here, the Bothos Mugena, he's responsible for a lot of a lot of bites in, in, in Brazil. But that venom worked very quickly. And she showed that behavior where she bites and hang hangs on to the prey item while it's dispatching it. You know, and and bites from these things are are so necrotic that 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 venom is so tissue damaging that a lot of a lot of bites that occur actually your secondary infection that sets in even after several days is a big problem. The infection sets in and they just start eating flesh, it, and it, and it's kind of like an unstoppable force and it becomes a really big problem for bite victims that's why i can't stress strong enough on keeping your own anti-venom for these types of animals if if you're working with bothrops if you're working with neotropical rattlesnakes especially neotropical rattlesnakes i mean you know a lot of the simus and derisus i mean they're you know crofab isn't going to work you know the antivenom that's available here in the, the healthcare system in the U.S., like Crofab is not going to work on them neotropical rattlesnakes. But we'll get into that when we when, when we do a, a Zobcon next. We're going to let this girl swallow this rodent.
Okay guys, and next on deck here, we're gonna run our little thing here on a, a Krogless Zobcon. And he's lining up. This is a, a yearling male. Oh, a bite and release. And I'll tell you, as as babies, these guys exhibit, they bite and hang on, and they kill very quickly. And honestly, I think that mouse is, it's, it's, it's done. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. That was fast. That was, that was quick too. I, uh, I think these are probably a little more potent than a damn Mugenai, but... Yeah, that was very quick. Very quick dispatch. But let me tell you now. Now, these species of rattlesnakes, I mean, everybody, you know, this is becoming a very popular snake in, in the venomous hobby, your your neotropical rattlesnakes. But your middle American rattlesnakes, you know, your, your say, Crolus simus, uh, you know, your Crolus zobcon, this species, your your, your, your Crolus culminatus, which we've, we have them all here at Venom Central. Now, they are the most venomous damn rattlesnakes in the world. I mean, they're actually, their components, I mean, oh, sure, they're, they're, they're hemotoxic, they're, they're, they're myotoxic, but they contain such a high capacity of a neurotoxin that they do that. Look at that mouse. I mean, but the thing is, is, is we're actually calling it crotoxin because the type of neurotoxin that this snake contains is extremely lethal okay and what people need to understand is a lot of a, a lot of keepers keeping these things should understand that crofab as an antivenom is not going to work with these animals with any of your simus complex your crolus simus your crolus zobcon your crolus culminatus it's not going to work because it's not derived from the right animals so you get bit by this and think you're going to go to the hospital and they're going to give you crofab and you're going to be fine. You're wrong. Let me let me tell you something. It's wrong. You need the correct antivenom derived for these animals because their whole compound of venom components is so different that it's it, it's nowhere near our North American species. And everybody thinks the Mojave is the hottest. No. This is a Mojave on steroids. Okay. And... <laughs> I, I can't stress enough about a bite protocol, especially if you're keeping simus, a bite protocol and having your own antivenom. Because if you think Crofab is going to save you, it's not. Because what's going to happen is, is if you say, here's a scenario. You get bit by a Crolus simus or a Zobcon or a Culminatus, right? All your middle American rattlesnakes. You go to the hospital, you tell them what you're bit by. They decide to give you Crofab. This crow toxin that this snake contains, it can cause acute renal failure, okay? Now, they go ahead and administer crofab. Now, crofab, if it's your body processes crofab through your kidneys, okay? It can attack your kidneys also if it's applied to the wrong species, Okay, so you've got a crotoxin attacking your kidneys, causing renal failure, and you've got crofab on top of that filtering through your kidneys, damaging your kidneys on top of the crotoxin. So you tell me. I mean, it's just it's just bad in every sense of the word. Okay, so I mean, I stress keep your own antivenom thing, but especially with these three species of rattlesnake. They are the hot some bitches in this ball game, okay? I mean, you see how quickly he dispatched that mouse. I mean, and that's that's a big monster rodent right there. I mean, he ended that thing quick, fast, and in a hurry. And this animal is a yearling, and he's three and a half foot. He's he's getting sizable, but it's it it's no joke to you keepers out there. You better get your shit in line. And get your stuff in order because if you ain't got the right protocol and you ain't got the right antivenom, you suffer a bite from one of these, an accident does happen, 
I mean, the first thing they're going to do is try to contact zoos, serpentariums, other professional facilities who keep antivenom. And they're not at liberty to give it to you. You know, they're, they're really not. Just like I'm not, you know, I, I, they can't make me give you my antivenom, you know. And just like zoos, you know, they can't make them give it up. I mean, it's theirs, you know. So I stress getting your own stuff. Rely on your own resources to save your own life. But enough of my ranting. <laughs> this guy's got the lights on him and he ain't digging it. <laughs> I might have to turn these lights off and let him swallow. But, uh, but yeah, it's just, you know. And what's interesting is with, with these Zobcons is they actually, they go through a change also. As adults, they're finding a higher concentration of <clears throat> some of that crotoxin, your neurotoxin component in these snakes. It's kind of turning into a hemotoxin component also. It's still keeping the neurotoxicity. But it actually changes into, they're, they're, they're developing a type of different hemotoxin as an adult, too. So, they're just crazy hot. And if you're keeping this species, do the research. Read all the, read all the, all the new stuff about them. There's stuff coming out every other month about neotropical rattlesnakes and the venom toxicity and the new components they're finding in it. But crotoxin is, it's one of the hottest toxins on Earth. So... <laughs> I suggest follow the right channels, get your own antivenom, the correct antivenom for these types of animals. Save your own life. But I'm going to have to turn these lights off and let this boy eat because he's a little spooked because I'm up here. I'm up here above him watching him and he's like, turn them lights off so I can eat my rat. <laughs> Damn. Those were quick. I'm going to tell you, the Mugenai just, I mean... I'm surprised. I'm a, I, I am surprised, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't know which was quicker thing, but you tell me. <laughs> tell me in the comments what you think. But that's that's venom at its best right there. But, um, hey, don't go nowhere because the really wild strikes are coming up. We got the fangs in your face coming right now. Okay, we're going to start out with the puff adders today. Now, I've had these guys off feed for a minute. You see that boy, he's nestling in. He's getting ready for a pop. They should be good and hungry. Cue him up with a little bit of vibration. See his little head poking out that box. Oh, 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 oh my goodness! <laughs> Oh yeah, he was ready, huh? Back it up there, Bubba. Man, <laughs> he come out of there in a hurry, didn't he? All right, buddy. And that's the male. We're gonna move over and feed another one. Okay, we got this very large female and she is not facing us. So this is gonna be one of them wild, crazy strikes. I gotta be really careful with this one. Oh, there you go, girl. She jumped sideways on that one. bulldog I don't mean to shake you guys up but I got to give her a little bit of action here <laughs> good girl there you go baby that is getting to be a monster of a puff at her and that's a large rat guys that's a big one <laughs> all right we're gonna feed a couple more fangs in your face coming at you today we're just having fun tonight y'all all right, this one's going to be a little wild because this snake just took a poke at me opening the door. Oh, oh boy. I barely got it in there. She came a long way for it. Uh, 
at a girl. You notice I don't have the mail in with her. We're waiting for the snake to give birth. Uh, she's holding on to him like they're money. But uh, we got him in a separate tub. That was a pretty good hit, girl. Oh, look at that. Fang stretch. Oh, cool. <laughs> Very nice. All right, guys, we're going to move on and feed some gaboons tonight. Okay, we got the big gaboons right up on the glass today. Let's see if we can get this big boy to do a nice fangs in your face strike. Oh, there he goes. He knows there's a rat there now. Here comes the tongue. He's getting ready. He's getting ready to pop. Look at his head quivering. <laughs> He's gonna let it touch him right on the nose, watch. Boom! <laughs> I knew he was gonna do that. Big old dragon. Okay, now for the big female. Let's see what we can get her to do today. And she, oh, nice, very nice. for that one. Good job, girl. That was cool. That just might come out really cool on the Venom cam. Oh, I have way too much fun doing this, guys. <laughs> okay, let's see if our little juvenile gaboons are hungry. These guys just got moved up to some bigger rats here just lately. Let's go over top. This is the one that does them crazy strikes. Yeah. Oh, 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 there you go. There you go. I think I seen some venom flying there on that one. Oh, you are something else, ain't you? Yeah, this little girl here, she's a handful. All right, guys, we got this gaboon tucked up way in the back of this cage, so we're going to cue him up out here. Let him know this is a rat coming in so he don't get defensive. This is the male, and he's pretty ornery. Let's see if we can get him to come up high for this. Oh, yeah, he come in like a rocket. Atta boy. Put a head on that rascal. Them damn venom glands are depressed to maximum capacity. <laughs> hey, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we had fun doing this video today. But, um, hey, if you're new to the channel, and we got a bunch of new subscribers, and thank all you guys for coming aboard Venom Central. But if you just found us and you're new to the channel, hit that V logo thing and subscribe now. And come on back and check us out at Venom Central. This is Willie. We're checking out. Later.